kill me. And if you dream of such a matter, I'll call me. Thou coldest me, thou coldest him, and thy hate despise me if I do not. Three great ones in personal suit to make me his lieutenant. And in conclusion, non-suit, my mediators, the certes, says he, have already chose my officer. And what was he? When Michael Cassio, a Florentine, was his lieutenant be. And I, God bless his mark, his moorship instant. By heaven, I would rather be his hangman. Why, there's no remedy. Tis the course of service. Preferment goes by letter of affection and not by own gradation where each second still heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself. Whether I am in just term, am I fine to love the more? I would not follow. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters can be truly followed. For, sir, it is as sure as you are Rodrigo, but I the more, I will not be Iago. Heaven is my judge, not I for a level of duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the native act and figure of my heart and compliment extern, just not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for doth to pick at. I am not what I am. What a fool of fortune this ridiculous old you can't care to them. Call up her father. Here's her father's house. I'll call it loud. Do, with that timorous accent and dire yell, as when by night and negligence the fire is spied in populous cities. It is not unlike my dream. Belief of it depresses me already. Light, I say! Light! Farewell, for I must leave you.
is true. And even God, she is. Where dost thou see her? What the Moor says thou? What said she to you? Are they married, think you? Truly, I think they are. Pray you, lead on. At every house I'll call, get your weapons home, and raise some special special officers of the night. I'm good with Rigo. I'll deserve your pains. Is it? Hey, get that Are you fast married? Be assured of this, that the Magnifico is much beloved and has in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you. All put upon you with grievance and restraint. The lots who force it on you will give him cable. Oh, that's a and speak on the better to his part of force and that's it that I Now we are That I love and deserve the Lord. And with not my unhoused free condition, but to the circumscription and confined to these words. What look more likely to know? Those are the race father and his friends. You were best go in. Not bad. I must be found. Fly forth my title and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it safe? By Janus. I think not. Ah, the servant of the Duke in my lieutenant. The goodness of the night upon your friend. What is the news? The Duke does, and Friday, for his here. Johnny is next. What's the matter, Percy? Nothing from Cyprus, as I may divine. For me, the castle is raised and met the Duke already. That is hardly called for. For not that the rival to be found, the sinner has sent three several quests to search you out. This is what I'm found by you. I'll send my word here in the house and go with you. Nice. Hey, what makes he here? Hey, he tonight hath boarded a land correct. If proof of lawful prize, he's made forever. I do not understand. He's married. To who? Married? Come, Captain. Will you go? I'm with you. Here come the secret. It is Bravancio. General, be advised. He comes to bad intent. Hola! Stay there. Senor. It is the more. No, Robert, you go I have for you! Oh, that foul thief! Where hast thou stabbed my daughter? Damn, that thou art. Thou hast enchanted her. Thou refer me to all things of sense. If she in chains of magic were not bound, would her maid so tender, fair, and happy, so opposite to marriage. She is shunned by the wealthy pearl darlings of our nation. Judge be the world. Tis not gross in sense. But thou hast enchanted her with foul charms, abused her delicate youth with drugs and minerals that tweak in motion. Or have disputed on! Hold your hands. Both you of mine crying. And the rest, where it's my cute fight, she have no one to put up Ponte. Well, will you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison! So fit time of law and course of session call thee to answer! What if I do obey? How may the Duke be there with satisfied, whose messengers are here about my side upon some present business of the state to bring me to him? This room will put this in your, the dosen council in your hotel. I'm sure it's simple. The Duke in council, at this time of the night. Take him away.
Aliens, hostile. I'm a straight employee of General Enemy Ottoman. Did not see you. Welcome, gentle senor. We lacked your help encounter tonight. So did I yours. Pardon me. Neither my place nor what I've heard of such a thing has raised me from my bed. Why? What is the matter? Here is a man. This more. Whoever he be that in this foul proceeding has thus beguiled your daughter of herself and you of her. The bloody book of law you shall yourself read and the bitter letter of your own sense. And what in your part do you have to say about this? Most potent, grave, and reverend seniors. My very noble and approved good masters. That I have taken away this old man's daughter? It is most true. True, I have married her. The very head in front of my offending hath this expect no more. Rude am I in speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. For since these arms of mine had seven years pith, till now some nine moons wasted, they have used their dearest action in the tinted field. The little of this great world can I speak, more than pertains to feats of world and battle, and therefore, it is shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. If by your gracious patience, I will around unborn as tale deliver my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjurations, what mighty magic! For such proceeding I am charged with all. I won his daughter. Maid is never bought. How is she to marry something that she has always feared to look upon? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the sanitary, but to speak of me before her father. You do finally follow her report, but trust the office I do hold of you. That's only take away, for let your sins even fall upon my life. Fetch this the Mona Hedda. Ancient conductor, you best know the place. Well, say it, Othello. Her father. Loved me, often invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year. The battles, sieges, fortunes I had passed. <clears throat> I ran it through, even from my boyish days, from the very moment that he bade me tell it. For when I spake of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hair breath escapes in the imminent deadly breach, and being taken by the insolent foe, and sold to slavery of my redemption thence. This to hear, when Desdemona seriously me inclined, but still the house affairs would draw her thence. Whichever, as she could with haste dispatch, she'll come again, and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse. Shy observing took once a plant out, and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart that I, with all my pilgrimage dialect, were by parcel she had something heard, but not intensively. I did consent. And often it beguiled her of her tears when I spake of some distressful stroke that my youth had suffered. My story being done, she offered me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith. It was strange. It was passing strange. It was pitiful. It was wonderful. <laughs> she loved me for the dangers I had passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only the witchcraft I have used. Here comes a lady. Let her witness it. I think this tower would win my daughter too. Good Rabaccio, I want you to take up this mangled matter at its best. Men do their broken weapons and rather use their bare hands. Come hither, Testimona. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive you divide to duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the Lord to duty. I am hither to your daughter. But 
here is my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess. Do to the morn, my lord. Come here the more. I hear thee give thee with all my heart what thou hast already with all my heart keep from thee. Proceed to the affairs of state. Observe that the most mighty preparation makes for Cyprus. Othello, prepare to the place is best known to you. The sovereign mistress is best known to you for a safer voice. I want you to go beat up these mighty Turks with the Bustarius expedition. The tyrant's custom, most great senators, have made the flinty and steel couch of war my thrice driven bed of down. I do acknowledge a natural and a prompt alert that I find it heartless. And do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife. You reference a place, an exhibition, with such accommodation and resort as levels with her breeding. If you please, be it at her father's. I'll not have it so. Nor I. Most gracious Duke, to my unfolding, lend me a prosperous ear, and let me find a charter in your voice to assist my sinfulness. What would you, Desdemona? That I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storms of fortunes may trumpet to the world. My heart is subdued, even to the very quality of my lord. I saw Othello's visage and his mind, and to his honors and valiant parts did I my souls and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind a moth of peace, and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me, and I heavy interim shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Let her have your voices. And heaven defend your good souls that you think your great and serious business I will scan for she is with me. Very well. Be it that you shall privately determine, neither for you staying or going, but so for the haste. Speed must answer it. That is why you must hence away tonight. Tonight, my lord? This night. Then, for my heart. At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello, leave some monster behind, and he, our commission, shall bring to you as doth import you. So please your grace, my ancient. A man, he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance, I assign my wife. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. And, noble senor, if virtue nor delighted beauty lack, your son in law is far more fair than black. Would you pray more? You pray more than well. Look to her more. If thou hast eyes to see, she has deceived her father, and may be. My life upon her faith! Honest Diago, by Desdemona must I lead to thee. I pray thee, let thy life attend on her, to bring them after in the best advantage. Come, Desdemona, I've got an hour of love to spend with thee. You must obey the time. <laughs> what should I do? 
I confess, it is my shame to be so fun, but it is not my virtue to amend it. <laughs> virtue of being, testing ourselves that we are thus or are thus. Our bodies are God as to which our wills are God in us. So that if we were born letters or soul letters, some heights of and we have done, supplied with one gender of us, or this practice of me. And that you have it style with idleness or manured with industry, where the power and corrigible authority of this lies in our wills. <laughs> the balance of our lives is not one scale of reason to poison another sensuality. The blood and basis of our wills will conduct us to the most preposterous conclusions. But we have reason to call our raging motions, our carnal things, our unbeaten lust. <laughs> Well, if I take this, you call it to be a sector sign. It cannot be. <laughs> Merely lust of the blood and permission of the will. Come, be a man. Drown thyself. Drown cats and blind puppies. I have professed me thy friend, and I confess it is me not to the discerning with cables of perjury and darkness. I can never better stand deed than now. <laughs> Put money in thy purse. Follow thou the walls. Defeat thy favor with an unserved beard. I say, put money in thy purse. It cannot be that this demona should long continue her love to the more. Put money in thy purse, nor he is to her. It was a violent commencement, and thou shalt see an answerable sequestration. Put but money in that purse. The food that you hear is as luscious as locusts shall now be shortly. As better as Kola Quintada. She must change for you. When she is seated with his body, she will find the error of her choice. She must have changed. She must. Therefore, put money in that purse. That one needs damn thyself. Do it in a more delicate way than drowning. Make all the money thou canst. If sanctimony and a feral thou betwixt an alien barbarian, be not too hard on my wits and all the tribe of hell. Thou shalt enjoy her. Will thou be fast in my hopes if I depend on the issue? Thou art sure of me. I call to provide that money. And I retell thee again and again. I hate the war. There are many events in the womb of time that shall be delivered. Go. Others, provide thy money. We will have more of this tomorrow. Adieu. Where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodging. I will be there, be tired. <laughs> Go to farewell. Do you hear, Rodrigo? What say you? I'm one of drowning, do you hear? I am changed. I will go sell all of my land. <laughs> <laughs> Thus do I ever make my fool my pus. For I my own gain knowledge should profane if I will time expect, but for my sport and profit. <sighs> I hate some more. It is that abroad that tricks my sheet he has done my office. I no, not if it be true, but I, for mere suspicion in that kind, will do as it for charity. He holds me well. <laughs> the better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let me see now. To get his place and to plumb up my will in double knavery. How? Hmm? How? I have it. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light.
them more. Oh, let the heaven give a defense against the elements. Why? Have lost him on a dangerous sea. But is he bullshit? His block is stoutly tempered. His pilot, a very expert, a prude allowance. Therefore, my hope, surfeited to death, stand in the bowl of cure. A cell, cell, cell. What noise? The child is sent on the brother's feet. There are people in the crowd, cell. Uh, my whole deuce, my, my whole deuce shape before the governor. I pray you, sir. Go for it. See you till the ride. I shall. The lieutenant is your general wife. Well, fortunately, he had achieved and made a paragon description and wild fame. One that excelled quick in blazing pens. And that essential venture of description does tire the engineer. How now? Who to put in? This one, Yago. It's it to the general. Mm. He has had a favorable happy speed. Great contingency sea and sky. Part of a fellowship. But hark, they sail! Good instant. Welcome. Welcome, mistress. <clears throat> Let not get your patient with the Iago. I stand my matter, but this is my breeding. This gives me this bone show of courtesy. <sighs> Sir, will she give you so much of a lift as of a tongue she off bestows on me? You'd have enough. Alas, she has no speech. I faith. I find it still when I have this to sleep. Marry before your ladyship, I grant. She puts her tongue a little on her heart and <laughs> shines with thinking. You have little cause to say so. Come on, come on. You are pictures out of doors, bells in your parlors, wild cats in your kitchens, saints in your injuries, devils being offended, players in your housewifery, and housewives in your beds. Oh, fie upon this slander. A most lame and important conclusion. Do not learn of him, Emilia, though he be thy husband. How say you, Cassio? Is he not the most profane and liberal counselor? You speak of home, madam. You may relish him more into a soldier, into a scout. Ah, he takes it by the palm. Well said, whisper. With as little as web as this will lie a snare, as great a fly as Cassio. I smile upon her do. I will give thee in thine own courtship. You say true? Just so indeed. Little tricks as these will strip you out of your lieutenantry. Had been better you had not kissed your three fingers so off. Which now again you are most apt to play the sir in. Very good. Well kissed. Just so indeed. Yet again your fingers to your lips. They were kissed to pipe for your sake. The more. I know. Just stop. Just There he comes. My fair warrior! My dear Othello! Gives me wonder, great is my content to see you here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. The heavens forbid, but that our love and comfort should increase even as our days do grow. <laughs> Amen to that, sweet powers. <sighs> I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. And this, up, uh, and this, the greatest discourse in our heart shall make. Oh, you are well tuned now. Now set down the pegs that make this music, as honest as I am. Lose, friends, our words are done. The Turks are drowned. Yeah! yeah! But as well as acquaintance of this isle. Honey, we shall be well desired in Cyprus. I have found great love amongst them. Come. But this is the castle.
So I'll be pressing the other part. Come hither, and I'll be best bay yet. As they say, base men being in love have then in their nobility a nature more than is native to them. Listen me. The lieutenant tonight watches on the court of God. First, I must tell thee this. Desdemona is directly in love with him. With him? What is that possible? Lay that thing of us and let thy soul be instructed. Mark me with what violence she first loved the more, but for bragging and telling her fantastical lies. And will she love him still for prating? Let not thy discreet heart think it. I cannot believe her. She's full of most blessed conditions. Bless pigs end! The wine she drinks is made of grapes. Bless him! If she had been blessed, she never would have loved the more. They met so near with the lips that the breaths embraced together. But then it starts for Adorigo. These mutualities so marshal the way, hard at hand comes the master and main exercise. In corporate conclusion. Sir, be you ruled by me. I have brought you here from Venice. I laid upon you. Cassio knows you not. Find some excuse to anger Cassio. Well? Sir, he is rash and very sudden and cooler and may happily strike at you. Provoke him that you may, for even out of that will I cause these of Cyprus to mutualities. This qualification shall not come into no true taste again but by the displanting of Cassio. Then, shall you have a shorter journey to your desires, by the means I shall then have to prefer them. I would do this if I could bring it to any opportunity. I want to. Meet me by and by at the Citadel. I must fetch his necessities ashore. Farewell. I do. That Cassio loves her. I do well believe it. She love him, tis Afton of great credit. The more, how be it that I endure him not? So a constant, loving, noble nature. And I do dare think he'll prove to Desdemona a most dear husband. Now, I do love her too, not out of absolute lust. Though I stand accounted for, it's great a sin. Partly led to diet my revenge. But I do suspect the lusty more hath leaped into my seat. The very thought of it, gone my inwards like a poisonous mineral. Nothing can or shall content my soul till I am even with him. Wife or wife. I'm failing so that I put the more into a jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. Our noble and valiant general, their concerning tidings now arrive, importing the mere perdition of the Turkish fleet. Every man put himself into triumph, some to dance, some to make bonfires, each man to whatever sports and reduce his addiction needs them. For besides this beneficial news, it is the celebration of his nuptial. So much of his presence should be proclaimed, all offices are open, and there are full liberties of fifteen from this present hour five to the bell until eleven. Heaven bless the hour of Cyprus and our noble general, Odello.
ourselves that honorable stop now to outspoor discretion. Hmm? Now we have a direction what to do. And not with standing in my own personal eyes. Well, I look to it. Yeah, I go most honest. Michael, good night. Tomorrow at your earliest, let me have speech with you. Come, my dear love. Aha! The first is made. The fruits are to ensue. That profit yet to come between me and you. Good night! <laughs> Who wants to watch? Uh, not this hour, Lieutenant. Tis not yet 10 o'clock. Our general best cast us the early for the love of his testimony. Who let us not that full blame? He has not yet made one in the night with her. She is bought for job. She is a more exquisite lady. And I warrant her full of game. She is a most fresh and delicate creature. 
Ah, uh, what an eye she has. She thinks it sounds partly to provocation. Inviting eyes and yet me think right modest. And what she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? She's indeed professional. <laughs> well, happiness to the sheets then. Come, Lieutenant. I'll be stupid of wine and here without our embrace of Cypress Gallus, who would fain have a measure to the health of Black Wathaw. Not tonight, good Iago. I had a very unburning and unhappy burns of drinking. I will wish other courtesy had been some other custom of entertainment. They are our friends! One drink! I'll drink for you. I have drunk one cup tonight and dare not tap my weakness anymore. What man? Tis a night of revels! The gods desire it! Where are they? Here, at the door. I pray you. Call them in. I'll do it. But just like me. I can fasten but one cup upon him. Fight, I'm a soldier. <laughs> the wine, ho! Huh? Shouldn't this man come out here drinking? Ah, he drinks you with facility. Your dame, dead drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he starts not to overthrow your army and gives the Hollander a bomb air. The next powder can be filled. <laughs> to the help of our general. I'm poor lieutenant, and I'll do you justice. Oh, sweet England! <laughs> he was a white of high renown, and thou art but of low degree. Tis pride that pulls the country down. Then take thy not luck about thee. Oh, why, other more exquisite songs than the other. Will you hear it again? No. Paul is going to be worthy of his place that does those things. Well, gods above all, their be souls must be saved, and their be soul must not be saved. It's true, good lieutenant. For my own part, no offense to the general, no any man of quality, I hope to be saved. And so do I too, lieutenant. Hmm. Let's not have no more of this. Let's look to our affairs. God forgive all our sins. Gentlemen, we look to our places. And I think I am drunk. This is my instant. This is my right hand. This is my left. <laughs> I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough and I speak well enough. <laughs> Excellent well. Why very well then? You must think I'm not drunk. To the platform masters, come and accept the watch. You see this fellow that has gone before? He is a soldier fit to stand by Caesar and give direction. And to but see his vice. But as he often does. To summon more the prologue to his sleep. To watch the royal logic double set. If drink not rock his cradle. It were well that the general will put in mind of it. Perhaps he sees it not. For his good nature prices the virtue that appears in Cassio. Is not this true? <laughs> I'll now run a regal act for you after the lieutenant. Go! <laughs> ah, it is great pity that the noble moor should have such a great place with such an engraft infirmity. It were an honest action to say so to the moor. <laughs> Not I for this fair island. For I do love Cassio well and will do much to cure him of this evil. But hark, what noise? Help! Help! You will, you wrestle! What is the matter? A name picking my duty. I'm picking name as well. Quick and bustle.
To unlace your reputation thus and spin your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler. Give me answer to it. Worthy your fellow, I am hurt to death. The officer Iago can inform you. Now my blood begins, my safer guys to rule. To monstrous! Iago, who began it? It's partially a fit or league in office. I'm trust to live in more or less, aren't you? A lot, no soldier. But you were not so near. I would have rather had this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. Yet yeah, I persuade myself to speak the truth. Shall nothing wrong him. As it is, General. On Tano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help. Cassio following with determined sword to execute upon him. Sir, this was brief. Found them close together at blow and trust, as again they were when you yourself did part them. More of this matter cannot I report. But men are men. The best sometimes forget. Though Cassio did some little wrong to him, as men in rage strike those that wish him best. Cassio, I believe, received from him what fled some strange indignity, which patience cannot pass. I know, Yago. Thy love and thy honesty thus lends this matter, making it like Cassio. Cassio! Cassio? I love thee. Nevermore, the officer of mine. Look at my gentle love, be not raised up, or make thee an example. What is the matter? All's well now, sweetie. I'm away to bed. <laughs> Sir, for your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him on. Yago. Look with care about the towel. Are you hurt, Lieutenant? I have asked. Man, heaven forbid! Reputation. Reputation, reputation! I have lost my reputation. I have lost an immoral part of myself. And what remains is a, a battle. My reputation now. My reputation. I'd rather soon to be despised than to be deceived so good in command. So slight, so drunken, and so being squeaking an officer. I have pleased the devil's rockness and the devil's wrath upon me. One that perfect me another made me frankly despise myself. Wine is a good familiar creature if he be well used. Exclaim no more against it. And good lieutenant, I think you think I love you. 
I will approve it. But I talk. You or any man living may be drunk at some time, man. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. I may say so in disrespect, for he hath given up himself to the contemplation and denotement to her pots and graces. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you back in your place again. She's also so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed in disposition. She holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than is requested. Revise me well. I protest in the sincerity of honest kindness. I thank you freely. But retire in the morning. I'll go to the virtue of death and mother. Then they take from me. I am desperate for my fortune. And they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must sit the watch. Good night, Asiago. Ah, not rather real. I do not follow here the chase, not like a hound that hunts, but when that fills up the cry, my money is almost spent. I have been tonight exceedingly well cuddled. And I think the issue would be I shall have so much experience for my pains. And so, with no money at all, and a little more wit, we turn again to business. How poor are they that have not patience? What wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest me work by wit and not by witchcraft. And what depends on dilatory time? Doesn't that go well? Cassio hath uh, beaten thee. And by that small hurt, thou hast cashiered Cassio. Be tired of me. Go with off a little. Go! Away, I say. Thou shalt no more hereafter. Nay, get thee gone! to have an intermission for 10 minutes.